Okay, this is problem number one on your homework that's due Wednesday, November 18th. Uh, here's the diagram that it gives you, and then it asks for three parts. It says A, state the congruent parts, B, state how the triangles are congruent, and then C, state the congruence. So let's do part A first where it says state the congruent parts. If you look at this diagram right here, then you can clearly see that I've got some congruent parts. This line right here and this line right here means that those sides are congruent. So I know that side AD is congruent to side BC and so when I go to record my answers on part A I can write that AD is congruent to BC and that's one of my congruent parts. The other thing that's marked on the picture is that this angle right here is congruent to this angle and when I go to state this, I don't want to say angle D is congruent to angle B because that's kind of ambiguous. When I say angle D, you don't know if I'm talking about the angle it gave me or if I'm talking about this angle right here or the whole angle. So I want to avoid just kind of saying angle D and instead I want to actually label this angle by three points. So this is angle A, D, B. Angle A, D, B, and it is congruent to angle D, B, C. Okay, so there's two of the congruent parts that I've got. The very last thing that I have that's congruent, anytime two triangles share a side, I can say that that side is congruent to itself. So I'm going to say that side DB is congruent to side DB. And I know that sounds like kind of a silly thing to say, but I need to be able to say it for the next part where I actually state how the triangles are congruent. So if you look at what all I've labeled congruent, for this first triangle on the left, I've got a side, and it's congruent to this side over here, I have this side that they share that are congruent and then I have these angles that are congruent as well. And so if you look at this picture I've got two sides and I've got the angle in between them so the way that they are congruent which is what part B is asking for so the answer to part B is going to be that they are congruent by side angle side. And that's really kind of the main point of what we've been trying to learn uh, in this class this week. The last thing I have to do is I have to state the congruence. So I'm actually going to say that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And the trick here is that I need for uh, all the points to line up exactly uh, how they should be so that all of the corresponding parts are congruent. So if I look at this triangle here on the left, I can see that point D which is where this angle is, corresponds to B. So when I go to write this, I'm going to say that triangle D, and I don't know what the last two letters are, but I know that it is congruent to triangle B. And then I'll figure out what the last two points of that triangle are. If I look, I know that this side, DA, corresponds to this side BC. So I need to have DA correspond to BC. And that makes sense from the segments standpoint. And so that means my last point is going to be for the first triangle is going to be point B. And it is going to correspond for the other triangle to point D. And so if you look, you can look at what you wrote in part A and all of these things should check out. AD is congruent to BC. Well, AD is the first two letters of this triangle and BC is the first two letters of this triangle. Angle ADB, which has a vertex at D, is congruent to angle DBC, which has a vertex of B, so those check out. And then you have the last statement where DB is congruent to DB. 
db is the outer two letters here, and it's the outer two letters here, and so this checks out, and so that's one way to name these triangles. Triangle DAB is congruent to triangle BCD, and that would complete uh, the answer for problem number one.